Welcome to Capitol Hill Mixtape, presented by RIAA. I'm your host, Tom Cleese. Welcome back to Capitol Hill Mixtape, presented by RIAA. I'm your host, Tom Cleese, and today it's my pleasure to introduce you to freshman Congressman Eric Sorensen of Northwestern Illinois. The Congressman spent a very long time as a TV meteorologist, and so that is why I'm wearing my green screen today. Um, I don't think we have the technology to post the, the current weather patterns across my shoulders, uh, but you know, just a little shout out to him. So Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your decision to get into public policy? Yeah, it's great to be with you, Tom. And, uh, and uh, you know, I think one of the things that makes you know, me different, and, and there are a lot of different things, right? Um, and, you know, it's the fact that, you know, I spent 22 years of my life um, on local television, on the local television news. It was different than, you know, a news anchor who is maybe, you know, reading a teleprompter of some news that he or she doesn't care about. Uh, but for me, it was, um, you know, when a disaster happened, I went and, you know, I talked with the people that were affected. I got to know my community. I worked at home too. I mean, for for tw almost 20 of the years that I uh, it was in the industry, I, I worked in my home district. Um, you know, I worked in Rockford, Illinois, and then I moved to, to Moline, Illinois. And, um, you know, I realized, you know, I was never a, a real political person, I'm gonna be honest with you, but, um, but I always paid attention. You know, like I was the number one consumer of broadcast news because I had the earpiece in my ear for two and a half hours of the show. You know, so I, I paid attention to what was going on. I felt like I had a voice, so I voted. And um, lo and behold, when I moved from uh, Rockford, Illinois to, to Moline, I stayed in the same congressional district. I didn't lose my congressperson. And so then when my congresswoman, Sherry Bustos, announced that she was not going to run, um, it was actually the 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 idea may have come into my my head because the news anchors across the studio, uh, John Ketz and Andy Sharp, they were the ones that that pointed to me like you need to do this, <laughs> and I'm like I'm not a politician, uh, but then you know I went home and you know tossed and turned and and realized wait a minute I don't think my home district I don't think my home needs another politician, you know we need somebody that was known for telling the truth no matter how good or bad and. Um, you know, I connected with the audience and uh, earned their trust. So that's why I gave it a go. Well, building off of that, you know, you were a figure in a lot of people's homes. You were also a representative figure. And now in Congress, you are the first openly gay member of Congress from the state of Illinois. Um, can you speak a little bit to what that representation has meant to your community and to your own life journey, both in the news sphere and now in the public policy sphere as a leader? Yeah, um, you know, I think a lot about you know my my younger me um and and i think about you know if i could go back and you know you know talk to to myself in in high school right you know when, when i was going through you know mental health struggles you know was this all worth it you know there were visions back in the 1980s of you know if you were gay you were going to end up in a hospital room and die um, or I wanted to be the meteorologist on TV, but they're never going to let somebody like me. Um, and the bullies were telling me that. Somehow I, I persevered. Um, I persevered through discrimination in the workforce. Um, and then I made it on television in Rockford, Illinois, my hometown. And so I thought about that a lot. The people that were pushing me down were now the ones that were relying on me uh, when the tornado was on the ground. And, you know, and then going through this uh, process of running through for Congress. It wasn't until after I had made the announcement that I was running for Congress that I realized Illinois had never elected a, an LGBTQ member before, ever. And, you know, we in downstate Illinois, a lot of times we're like, I can't believe Chicago hasn't done that yet. Well, you know what? We, we did it in Moline, Illinois first. And that was only because we live in a great place. Um, the people here uh, were, were, were so loving. I mean, they, they welcomed me into their homes. Uh, on television. And, you know, for a lot of these people, I was the only LGBTQ person that they ever knew. We were very surprised to learn that Illinois had not yet elected an openly LGBT person. Chicago, it's time to catch up. I hope you're yeah. getting that message loud and clear. Um, so now switching gears a little bit, Congressman, uh, did you happen to have a campaign song? So we didn't, but, you know, I, so here's the weird thing. And, you know, the viewers of local television here now, what my music style is. So I'm, I'm like one of those all over the board type of people. Um, but like, I have an old soul. 
you know, I look back to the things I listened to when I was a kid, the, the, the songs that made me get through. Um, and one of them that we played on election night was Forever Young by Rod Stewart. Um, you know, and, you know, I, I know the lyrics, you know, it's, you know, be courage and be brave in my heart. You'll always stay forever young. Um, you know, may you grow to be proud, dignified and true. I mean, th those are words that spoke to me, not just in an election, not just in a campaign, um, but those were words that that helped me when I was a kid and they helped me today. So now moving forward, now you're a member of Congress. Uh, this Congress had a really interesting start, and I'm sure that this is not the, the first interesting piece of this next two years. Um, when you are going to do the people's business, yeah. is there a song that helps you to either pump up for that experience or maybe <laughs> afterwards to unwind a little bit to, to sort of become Eric again and not the, the congressman? You know, yeah, yeah. what are the I'm gonna songs open, that help you do that? Let me open up the app and I will tell you, <laughs> this is crazy. I don't think I've ever let anybody know what my, um, what my playlist is like. Um, I got a lot of Earth, Wind & Fire, uh, Hall & Oates, I have Neil Diamond. I, I it's it's just like speaks to me, um, you know, um, just the way you are by uh, Billy Joel. Um, you know, these these are all songs that just kind of, I don't know. They they if it's if it's that they relax me or if that they bring me life, um, things like that. And then if I really really um, need to to unwind, it's you know throw on some classical music or if I can, you know, it's I'm turning my camera to the uh, the piano that I have here. I, I play the piano too. So, and I, and I just make things up as I go along. And that was actually one of the things that my, my piano teacher when I was a kid told me, she goes, Eric, don't be nervous. Don't be nervous when you get there up there on stage uh, that you might forget something, um, you know, because you're going to find your way back to that music. And, you know, I, I had to picture, you know, when I'm playing by memory, you know, what the, uh, the lines of music were, and sure enough, I got up there and I and I could not in my brain picture what the next line of music was, and so I kind of made it up, and then I came back to it because then all of a sudden I knew what that next line looked like, and I got right back into it. And she had told me she goes, "No one's going to know, uh, no one's going to know the difference if you have it in your head and you have it in your heart. You're going to know how it goes." And, and so that actually has helped me even, you know, standing on the floor of the House of Representatives for the first time, um, standing at that podium and giving my first speech on the record. So that is a very beautiful story. And I'm so grateful for you uh, taking the time telling us that. Um, it was also a big mistake on your part because now we know you play the piano. Uh, and, and once we find out that members of Congress play instruments, we tend to have them come over to RIAA Live and play on our stage. So you might be hearing more from us about that. All right. It, um, as, long, as long as you have the sheet music to Claire DeLune, uh, that's, that's my absolute favorite song. We could make that happen. I think we have the technology. Um, well, Congressman, thank you so much for having this conversation with us. The, my last question for you yeah. is, you know, uh, your office is working on a lot of things that are in the news and a mm -hmm. lot of things that are not. Is there one thing that's not necessarily getting a lot of press, it's not front page news that your office is working on or planning to work on that you just want more people to know about? Yeah, I mean, it, I think it's, um, you know, it's collectively. I, I'm one of those people that believes that we stand up for rights. Rights are in jeopardy today. Um, you know, whether that's reproductive rights, um, whether that's a worker's rights um, to have their voice heard. Um, you know, I'm a, a co-sponsor of the PRO Act, um, which, which gives people the right to organize. Um, it's the Equality Act. Um, we've got to make sure that we stand up uh, for our rights as we have them and as we seek them, uh, because, you know, we're so much better when we are a collective uh, voice. Instead of having one person uh, feel like they're shouting or that they're going underwater, and when they come up, they have to gasp for air and, 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 and scream for help, um, no, we, we're going to do all of this together. And, and, and that's my focus from this point forward is, is what are we going to do so that people have more rights in the future than they have today? Well, Congressman, thank you so much for being on our program. Thank you so much for having everybody's back in your district. And uh, we look forward to seeing everything you're going to accomplish. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Awesome. It's been fun. Thanks, Tom. Thank you so much. This has been Capitol Hill Mixtape. I'm your host, Tom Cleese, and we look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you.